So I was recently accepted into medical school and I thought the pre-match match process was a little confusing so I just wanted to make a video explaining the entire thing. So just to clarify what is a pre-match, it's simply a early acceptance letter for a medical school. And then on match day you get your actual acceptance letters. So pre-matches are basically offered to exceptional students or if a school just really wants you um, based on interviews or other criteria. So just a few important dates. I have stars around all of these just because they're subject to change every year, but I think these have basically held constant um, every year. Um, so October 15th is for non-residents. That's when they get their pre-matches. For most people that will be watching, it's from November 15th to December 31st. What I've heard is most people get it around November 15th. The reason why they have this entire um, date is because uh, uh, if people decline their offers, then they can give it to other people on their wait list. And so that's why there's the entire range. But what I've heard is most people do get it around November 15th. And I think maybe a second second wave of smaller, a smaller wave of uh, pre-matches go out in the middle of this range. And then January 19th is when you submit match preferences. I'll explain that later. And then finally, uh, match results are announced on February 1st. So first I'll go through my experience of the process and then I'll explain other um, scenarios uh, wh which you can encounter during this process. So on November 15th I was lucky enough to get three pre-matches. Um, so how this works is uh, you before November 15th you basically should formulate uh, theoretically if you got into every school which one, where do you go to? Um, so for me, um, uh, I looked at my pre-matches uh, and I really liked UTSA. And so I chose it as number one. And then um, for my other two pre-matches, I, I like both of them, but you have to give it a ranking. So I put it in this order. Um, and then there's, so I interviewed at um, six schools uh, but I'm just going to show you these four as an example, um, just to make it easier. And so, for this for this list, right? You just you choose your number in school, and then you just choose the other rankings, um, uh, just based on what you think, uh, uh, how you like the school. So on actual match day, which is February first, what happens is the computer looks at your number one, and so that's UTSA. Um, and then it drops everything below it. So for example, even though I got a pre-match, which is an early acceptance letter, all three, everything below UTSA will be dropped. And so it's not like on May, for example, this is in February. Um, it's not like in May, I can suddenly decide to want to go to El Paso because I think I have an acceptance letter because it's already been dropped on February 1st. So I think that's an important point to note. The other thing that I didn't really know about before this process is that you actually will not know which schools, the total number of schools that you got accepted into. So luckily enough, um, I got accepted into three. So I knew that I got at least three medical school acceptance letters. However, theoretically, I could have gotten like three more, right? Um, since uh, I, I had six interviews and theoretically you could technically have six interviews and get six acceptance letters. However, if you match into your number one, you would only know that school. So you'd only know that you got into one medical school. So I think that that, that sort of like bums you out, but I think it's a good thing because that way um, you don't have to stress with decision making. So the entire process is built like this um, so that you can make the assumption that you get into every medical school and decide your list based on what you think is a good medical school. And then therefore uh, on match day, it goes through your list and shows you which one you get. So uh, I would just wanna show you a couple of other scenarios uh, which you might encounter during the process. So for scenario number one, um, hopefully uh, you do get a pre-match because that way you know that um, you can be happier earlier, like three months earlier. But if you don't, um, that's that's fine because uh, pre-match is just an early acceptance letter, right? You can always get acceptance letters on February 1st. So it's no worry, no need to worry. So for example, you uh, even if you don't get any pre-matches, you still have to submit a rank list by January 19th. 
So let's say you really like UT Southwestern and UT Houston. Um, and so you rank these as number one and two, and then you also interviewed at A&M, so you put it as three. Um, so then on match day, what happens is uh, February 1st, um, the computer goes and looks at number one and looks to see if you have an acceptance letter from UT Southwestern. It shows, uh, no, you don't, you're actually on the wait list. So then what it goes is it goes to your number two, and that's UT Houston. So it shows that you do have an acceptance letter there, and so you get accepted, and you will go to number two. And then everything below that gets dropped. So even if you got acceptance letters, for example, to A&M, that would be dropped. Um, and so, so you're basically going to UT Houston. However, um, if someone else declines UT Southwestern and you were next in line, well then it would go from number two to number one, and so then you would be going to UT Southwestern. And so that's how that works. So you can have, um, you can be accepted somewhere, for example, to your number two, but that doesn't mean number one's out of the running. Um, until like May or June of that year, um, you can you can be put off the wait list and actually get on. And so then you will go to that school if that was your number one choice. So that's what that's how it works if, for example, um, you didn't have any pre -match. The final scenario is, um, let's say you have a, you have a pre-match, right? You do get, let's say, one pre-match. Um, and so, but you still like UT Southwestern more than that. So you put UT Southwestern as number one, and then you had a pre-match, you got a pre-match to UT San Antonio, so you put that as number two, and then let's say you put El Paso as three. So on match day, what happens is, um, if you, d it looks, the computer looks at number one, it sees that you do have an acceptance letter from UT Southwestern on February 1st, then you get accepted here, and then UT San Antonio gets dropped. Uh, that's important to note because even though you do have an acceptance letter to your number two, it will be dropped because you chose something higher as number one and you did get accepted. So that's really important to note um, that like you can't just choose number one thinking that you don't get it. For example, um, maybe you really do like UT Southwestern, but uh, later on you decide that um, you don't really like the research component. Well, now after February 1st, your pre-match, your acceptance letter from UT San Antonio gets dropped and it's not like you can change your decision. So really um, make your choice about which school you want to go to and then make your decision because treat this, treat match day as if um, you got into every medical school you wanted to and then choose the pros and cons based on that. Uh, otherwise, um, you'll you'll end up in a school that you didn't want to go to. And that's the entire point, so that you make this entire process before you get accepted. So that way you can just go down the list of your best picks for medical school. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.